Welcome back to the channel, Optical Mechanic here. Today I'm planning to make a couple of more components for the uh, air engine, which I've shown before. So this is the Apprentice air engine. Um, and just uh, as a reminder for anyone who has seen the videos before or anyone who hasn't seen them before, um, what I'm doing here is I'm recreating um, this little steam engine that I made when I was an apprentice. Um, I didn't design it, it was designed by one of the college uh, tutors and um, it's nearly um, all metric. There's, there are a few threads that are BA, um, but uh, I'll be I'll be converting everything over to metric as I uh, make all these parts. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll select metric equivalents. And the parts I'm planning to make today um, will be the flywheel, this stepped flywheel here, and also this piece here, which acts as a as a crank. Um, so it's kind of like a a web of a crank. And uh, I'll show you what the drawings look like in a bit more detail. Move that out of the way. So. Um, this is what the the assembly looks like in section. So that's the engine that I've just shown. And um, so this is the part of the, the part of the crank. So it's a it's a round disc, 40 mil diameter, um, 6.35 or quarter of an inch in thickness. It's got an M8 tapped hole down the middle of it. And then there's a reamed hole um, through there, which I haven't dimensioned. So these are the drawings from when I was in apprentice. But if I look at the crank pin, the piece that goes into it is four mil diameter. So that hole will be four mil diameter and I'll, and I'll be reaming that. Um, but that'll be a job for another day when um, when I'll be doing the, the milling ops on the bridge port. And then the flywheel is this part here so this is this will come out of a piece of 50 mil stock and then it's stepped down to 40 and 30 and then it's got a 16 mil hole down the middle of it and that wants reaming and that will fit onto the main shaft here which is that and that's the main shaft that runs right down the middle of the engine so that that's that there and uh, the the crankshaft components the the m8 thread that goes through the middle of there is what screws onto the end of here so we start the job off by clocking up the bar stock in the four jaw chuck um, I haven't used this four jaw for a while so it's nice to use it now and again and um, I'm using a 10 micron dial gauge to do that we start off with tool number one and we face off the bar stock and this tool sets the references for the DRO. Now I'm just cleaning up the outside diameter of the bar stock. It's, it's close to 50 millimeters, so I don't need to machine it to a set size. It just needs to look nice and presentable really. So I'll start to machine the first step and this one is 40 millimeters diameter. I'm machining here uh, with a depth of cut of 0.5 millimeters so I'm reducing the diameter by a millimeter with each pass and the feed rate is 5 thou per rev. As you can see it's getting quite warm um, and uh, these inserts are not the best, these are those and branded offerings and that mess just there that was because I'd slowed the feed rate down and it didn't like it so it needs enough of a, of a feed to produce a decent um, swarf and, and clear the tool. As a lubricant I'm using WD-40 which doesn't stick around for very long because the workpiece is so hot so it just gasses off pretty much straight away 
So one of the things that I need to get around to doing on my lathe is, uh, is putting together a coolant system and I think that will help jobs like this uh, massively. Some of the swarf there, it kind of bird nested around the lead screw which is a real pain so um, I have to watch out for that. The other thing is because of the position of the um, the feed lever, the longitudinal feed lever, um, when you're ready to switch it off, it's Sos Law that some hot swarf lands on your hand, it's in a really awkward place. So another job that I need to look at doing is just making a little guard just to protect against swarf and um, to prevent it from landing on your hands when you're operating the machine. So that's the roughing pretty much done now and now I put the uh, drill chuck on the tool post into position, uh, bring the centre drill and just mark the, the centre for the pilot hole and I'm using a 5mm drill to put that pilot hole through. I wimp out a little bit here because in, I, I, if I followed my own advice then I'd go straight to the 13mm drill from here but this is stainless and it does take some some pushing through so um so i i go up in a, a couple of uh, steps in diameter bore through the middle of the part ends up being 16 millimeters diameter and I'll be reaming that hole but unfortunately I don't have a 15.8 millimeter drill so what I'm doing here is I'm just setting up to use this small boring bar that I ground from a, a piece of high speed steel and I'm boring it to 15.8 millimeters the boring bar is a bit limited on depth because it's only 30 millimeters long and um, so what you'll see me doing here later on is flipping the part around to finish it to finish the bore to length from the other side and uh, but here I'll be boring to about 30 millimeters deep the length of the flywheel um, ends up being 39 so uh, so yeah, the, the boring bar is not long enough to reach through the whole thing, but that's okay. It worked out fine in the end. Quick check with the caliper just to see where we are, and then we'll move on to finishing off the bore size. So we flip the tool post round now to fit the DCMT tool in, uh, which is number two, to do the finishing machining. And I realised that I'd messed up my DRO reference, so I put tool number one back in just to just to reset it. And I'm coming in now, just taking the minimum off these faces because uh, I just want to clean up. But this carbide does need, um, I'd say, minimum. 50 mics to 100 mics to to get a decent uh, swarf off here but 
you can see now that there's something wrong with the finish so this insert must be chipped because uh, the it's really rough so I swapped the insert for a Sandvik insert the other one was another um, Chinesium non-branded thing which frankly is crap um, so I've high hopes for these uh, Sandvik inserts if these don't perform well then as far as I'm concerned nothing will and the finish there is, is really nice so we'll come in with the chamfer tool just break those corners nicely and um, I tend to let the, the chamfer tool rub after I've um, machined it to the size I want I just let it rub just to get a nice finish and then a quick clean up with some scotch bright and break the corner of that bore with the countersink and this side of the flywheel is done so in goes the passing tool and I start off using some WD-40 but um, like I said earlier it doesn't stick around for very long the workpiece is quite warm so it um, gasses off pretty quick so I switch over to using just some oil and uh, that sticks around longer and does a better job really she pops so I didn't show it but um, I've got the part reversed in the, in the three jaw chuck now and I've got the shoulder pushed up against the jaws of the chuck and to protect the workpiece I've got a strip of um, an aluminium can wrapped around the, the workpiece just to protect it from the chuck jaws and um, so I, I face off with the DCMT tool and now I'm coming in with the boring bar like uh, I said I would and I'm turning this to 15.8 millimeters. So I'm just indexing the tool around a little bit on the tool post uh, so that I can put a chamfer on. This shot's not very good, it's not showing what I, what I did very clearly. But that, that's one of the real plus points of the multi-fix, that you can change the approach angle of the tool quite easily. So as you can see, um, with plenty of oil here, I'll ream this hole now with the 16mm reamer using the tailstock. So that brings this weekend's machining to a close. Uh, the two parts that I've made um, on this on this particular video, one was the um, the crank here, which is this effectively a disc with a, an M8 hole through it, and um, and that's screwed up onto the the main shaft for the engine. So that's situated like that on the drawing. Um, that and then <clears throat> I also machined this step flywheel so I don't know if it's going to come through on the the video well enough but the surface finish is really good I changed the insert for a, a Sandvik a DCMT to do the finish machining with and it's really 
produced a really nice finish. I'm really happy with it. And this is uh, th this is 316 stainless. So the finish is absolutely fantastic. Really happy with it. So that should that should stay in good condition um, and um, shouldn't tarnish. It's a bit better than than this that I made here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that was machined with high speed steel uh, back in the 90s. Um, and you can still get a good finish with high speed steel. Um, but um, I just thought I'd show what kind of finish there is on this. So that that will fit onto there. There's uh, a couple of ops that I still need to do. One is I need to drill and tap a hole here for the grub screw, which retains the flywheel onto the shaft. And what I might do is machine a little flat onto there so it's got um, a, a better surface for bearing onto. This crank needs a pinhole drilling and reaming. So I'll do that on the, on the milling machine. And also the bearing housing needs three equi spaced holes around the flange which I haven't done yet either, but I'll I'll do all of those things when uh, when I do the the milling ops. So that's how it's looking so far, and um, so the the next turning jobs will probably be the the bearing in here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a bearing in there. There it is, in the end plate, and. There'll be this crank pin that needs machining, the connecting rod and the piston, and then also the cylinder, which is mostly milling, but will have a, a hole ream through it. And I'll make the piston to fit that, so it's a, a nice running fit in there. And then there's the top cap on here. Uh, after that, there's this, this rod. This is just a piece of silver steel with um, an M6 thread on both ends. So there are a few more little turning jobs to do on this little air engine, uh, but it's coming along nicely and uh, I'm enjoying it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this and um, yeah, that's probably it for now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one very soon. Bye for now.